Hey everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to talk about the free version of Farming Simulator 22 that is available over at Epic Games between, well, last Thursday up until this Thursday at around 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now I had put a post in the community tab of my YouTube channel when I realized that Farming Simulator 22 was free over at Epic. This is not the first time that Giants and Epic have offered Farm Sim for free for a week, but it is not like a free to play for a week. It is free to add to your account for a week. And then once you add it to your library, it's free forever to play. So this is not like a free to play weekend. This sometimes happens on Steam. So you can very much for the next few days, go to Epic, sign up if you don't have an account or log in with your account and redeem a free to keep forever copy of Farming Simulator 22. Now it is the base game, but there is lots of stuff that you can do or possibly take advantage of by having that free copy of Farming Simulator 22 from Epic. One of those things might be, well, maybe you've got some family that you are trying to get into Farming Simulator to do some multiplayer with. Well, this is a great chance for them to pick it up at no cost. And, well, you can run multiplayer sessions with consoles, with other people on PC using the Steam copy, Epic copy, or direct download copy, and have a great time there. Because we all know anyone that has experienced multiplayer in Farm Sim knows that basically that is basically where it's at. And it is far superior than single player gameplay. But what we're going to focus on here today is to talk about actually running a private dedicated server with that free epic copy in fact i'm on a free epic dedicated server right now running this video and we're going to talk about how do you go about getting the game how do you go about configuring the epic copy to run as a server and then of course connecting to it and enjoying it with up to 16 friends. Now you may say to yourself, Farmer Klein, why are you why are you telling people how to get a free dedicated server? Are you not a Jeep World partner? Well, I am indeed a Jeep World partner, and yes, I indeed earn a little bit of kickback anytime someone signs up for a dedicated server over at Jeep World. And I would encourage you if this use case scenario does not fit your needs that you go ahead and check out G-Portal out because they are an excellent dedicated game server host. But running a dedicated server off of a G-Portal server isn't always the best solution. And we're gonna talk about that here right now. So why would you maybe wanna run your own private dedicated server as opposed to just simply renting one from a company like Jeep World. Well, the first reason that would come to mind is that you plan on running a dedicated server for a very long time for potentially a lot of players. As you know, with dedicated servers that you rent, there is a monthly fee. Of course, you could sign up for six months or maybe a year at a time, and you do get a bit of a discount, but there is an ongoing to doing that if you would for for example have picked up a G portal server that supports let's say eight players when farming simulator 22 first released we're now in our third year with farming simulator as a released product you would have at this point have paid for three years of dedicated server fees in order to have that server available to you. You would probably have also went ahead and picked up the 25 gig mod expansion capability in order to have 25 gigs of mod space available to you also on the server. So that's gonna be a little bit of extra cost per month as well. If you take up the cost of running that server and paying for that server for three years, you're gonna come up with a cost. Let's go ahead and kind of figure out what that cost might be. So here we are on the G Portal site. 
I went ahead and pulled up Farming Simulator 22. We're going to go to create your own configuration. And we're going to say we want eight slots so we can have up to eight players on at any one point in time. We're going to go ahead and get the maximum discount of 365 days. We're going to add 25 gigs of mod space to that. And we're going to go ahead and pick Washington, D.C. because that's just the best available to me. It's $146.67 per year. So that's $450 over three years. $450 over three years. Okay. Well, let's go cheap. Let's say we're only going to do a four slot server. That's $86.05 over four years for a dedicated server with 25 gigs of mod space. Okay. Just a frame of reference. If you were to run your own dedicated server, you're going to have to buy a second copy of the game. You can't run a server and play the game on the same copy. Okay. So there's multiple ways of getting a different copy. You can get it from Giant's eShop, which is what we have pulled up here. You can get it from Epic. You can get it from Steam, or you could pick up a physical copy of the disc from a collector's edition or something like that. And basically, you now have a second copy of Farming Simulator 22. Over here at the Giants eShop, you can pick up the Premium Edition, which is going to be basically the most complete edition. It's going to have the Year 1 Season Pass, the Year 2 Season Pass, and the base game for $49. That's $30 cheaper than renting a four-slot dedicated server for a year. We're three years in, right? So we would have done saved ourselves three times over. You could pick up the base game, which is $39.99 here on the Giants eShop. I believe it might be a little bit cheaper over at Epic. Of course, it's definitely cheaper over at Epic right now because it's free until May 30th, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. At that point, the discount is null and void and you'll have to pick up your own copy. So you can see if you plan on running a dedicated server for more than, let's say, a few months, then it might be worth looking at running your own dedicated server if you have the resources. What resources do you need? Well, one, you're gonna need an extra computer at the house or basically available somewhere that you can connect to it from the internet. Now that extra computer can pretty much be a potato because it doesn't take a lot to run a dedicated server of Farming Simulator 22. Basically, you need to be running either Windows 10 or 11 and you need to be able to install the Epic Launcher and then have enough disk space to install the game and then have enough disk space left over for you to basically have your mod space. For this demonstration, I'm gonna be using a little mini PC that's running a 5,000 generation um, AMD processor. It's got 16 gigs of RAM and I think 128 gigs of disk space or something like that. Plenty of, plenty of resources, again, for a dedicated server. It could be an old laptop. It could be an old desktop. Laptop might be preferable if you've got access to one, simply because typically a dedicated server would be left running 24 seven. And as such, something that pulls less power would be more preferable than some big old honking desktop PC that may be a little less power efficient. With that, let's jump over to that PC and start talking about what it's going to take to configure the Epic copy to work as a dedicated server. So as I mentioned, you're going to need a PC that's going to be able to run Windows 10 or Windows 11. I've got Windows 11 installed here, again, on that little mini PC that I'm going to be using for this demonstration purposes but it could be literally any PC that you have that's again running Windows 10 or Windows 11. First thing you need to, gonna to need to do is obviously go to Epic Games, download the launcher if you don't already have the launcher, create an account or log into your Epic account. And then once you're there, go to the store, scroll down until you find the free game of the week right here, Farming Simulator 22. We're gonna click on that. If you haven't already redeemed it, we're going to be able to add it to our cart right here. We're going to check out for $0 and 0 cents, and then we're going to add it to our library. 
once it's installed in our library, we can go to our library and we can click here and install the game. Once you have the game installed, then we're going to come back to the Epic launcher and we're going to launch the game for the very first time on what we're going to eventually have as the dedicated server. And when we launch the game, we're going to want it to go all the way up to the main menu and then we're going to close it. The reason we're doing that is we want to make sure that the game is properly licensed and activated with Epic Games before we configure it to launch in command line interface with a launch tag. So once we've done that, installed Farming Simulator 22, and we've run it for the first time on the system that we are going to be making into our dedicated server, we're going to close the game down. We're going to come back to the Epic Game Launcher. We're going to come to the menu here. We're going to go to settings. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to change a few things. First thing we're going to change is we're going to turn off cloud saves. This is only going to be for the Epic launcher that's running on the server that we will dedicate to Farming Simulator 22. We're going to turn off, well, I guess we could check run when computer starts because we definitely need the Epic launcher running. We're going to turn off show free game notifications and show news and special offer notifications because there's no real need for these to be shown. We're going to continue to scroll down here and we're going to come to our Farming Simulator 22. And we're going to check additional command line arguments. And in here, we're going to add dash server. And once we do that, we can exit the settings. And now we're pretty much done with the Epic launcher. So we can close that or minimize it. We don't want to actually close it. The rest of this information is going to come from an excellent forum post over at the Giants forum that has information about how to basically use the Epic 19 version, the free Epic 19 version, that Giants offered way back in around 2020 and converted over to a dedicated server because that is just an absolute excellent post. Let's go ahead and pull that up. I've got a link to this post down in the description, but we're just going to walk, kind of walk through this because there's a few things that we're going to want to copy from this post into our dedicated server as we continue to configure it. But here is so, I believe I've completely butchered that pronunciation but at any rate he's got an excellent post here where he talks about the steps again needed to take what was at the time in april of 2020 the free version of farming simulator 22 that was available at epic games and configure it and convert it to run as a dedicated server without really having to go through a whole lot of hoops and rigmarole as you can see, we've already added the dash server to the command line arguments. And now we're going to basically start configuring the server files. And we're going to cross-reference this post with some of the things that we're going to be doing on the server directly. First thing we want to do is we want to go to File Explorer and we want to navigate to the install location of Farming Simulator 22 Epic version. If we didn't change the default install locations, that's going to be under C, Program Files, Epic Games, Farming Simulator 22. I've installed this game onto a D drive, so my install path will be slightly different than the default install path. But just note that if you have not changed the default install path, a lot of the directions that are going to be on the forum posting will be correct, with the exception of us needing to basically rename some files from Farming Simulator 19 to Farming Simulator 22. First thing we want to do is we want to take dedicated server, these two files, the application and the XML, and we're going to copy those. And we're going to come back, and I would suggest creating a folder on your C drive. Here I have it on my D drive, 
and I create a folder called FS underscore server. Basically, we want to create a folder somewhere that we can easily get to that is outside of the default install path for Epic Games' Farming Simulator 22, and we're going to place those files into it. So I created a FS22 server, and I pasted the dedicated server and the dedicated server XML file into that particular folder. We want to then go take our right-click on our XML file, and we're going to click Open with, and we may have to pick Choose Another App if Notepad is not listed. So we're going to pick Notepad, and then we can say Always. And now that we have the dedicated server XML open, there's a few things we need to change. We're going to go to Username under Initial Admin, and we can change this to be something other than admin. It is highly recommended that you change this to something other than admin just to make it a little bit more difficult in order to basically try to crack into your web admin page. For this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it as an admin. Under passphrase, or this section might say password, this is going to be the password you need to enter in order to log into the web server. I'm just going to leave it as admin because you know what? This is just a demo and it really doesn't matter. But here you would put the password that you want to use in order to log in once again into the dedicated server web interface. The port up here, 8080, you can leave this as it is configured. 99.9% .9 of the time it will be completely fine. But if you think you might have difficulty in remembering 8080, you can change this to be whatever you want. For example, 8088 is a fun little one that I like to pick because I won't forget that one. That's basically gonna be the port you need to use to again, log into the web interface. A Couple other things of note down here under game description, where it says Farming Simulator 22, name Farming Simulator 22. Then we're gonna to go to where it says EXE, and we're gonna basically back out everything that is between the quotations. It should say something like Farming Simulator 2022, game.exe. We want to back that out and we're just going to type in run.bat in there exactly how you see it here. That is pretty much all you need to do here in this XML configuration file. You could, if you wanted to, also delete this section here between inprint and logos. I'm going to show you what this is going to look like. If you leave it there, it's going to clean up the web interface a little bit if you get rid of that. But in theory, you could add some logos if you wanted to brand your website a little bit, but really the only person that's gonna be logging into it is gonna be you anyway. At that point, we're gonna save it and we're gonna close. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to make a folder, X64. So easy enough, right click, new folder, X64. We're gonna come into here, we're gonna right click, new, text file, and we're gonna call it run. We're gonna open that text file, and now we're gonna go back to the forum post, and we're gonna reference some code that we need to add into this file. So we've made it up to step eight of this forum post. We're going to select all, right click, copy. And now we're gonna go back to our server, and we're going to paste this into our run text file. Now that we have this pasted in, there's a few things we need to change. First, it's not going to be Farming Simulator 19. It's going to be Farming Simulator 22. Second, if you did install this to some other location other than the default, then you're going to want to change this path to be whatever and wherever you changed the install path to be. We're just gonna be leaving it at C, Program Files, Epic Games, Farming Simulator 22, because that is gonna be the default. Also, we're gonna change the last line from Farming Simulator 2019 to, guess what? Once again, Farming Simulator 22. Then we have a couple values. We have auth underscore login and auth underscore password. Here's where we need to enter our Epic accounts login and our Epic accounts password. Because basically when we run the game from the web interface, 
it is going to execute this file, which is going to launch Farming Simulator 22, and it's going to use the auth login and the auth password, password values to log into the Epic's game launcher and basically just verify that you do indeed have a right to run the game. So go ahead and put in your auth login. This will be your Epic username. And this will be your Epic account's password. Once you have that entered, we're going to go to File, Save As. And here we're going to go quote, run, dot bat, quote. Okay. By putting the quotes before and after run dot bat, we've told the game or we've told the server, we want to name this file run dot bat. If you don't do that, it's still going to be a text file and it's not going to be executable. So quote run dot bat quote, and we're going to hit save. For me, it's going to say, do you want to replace it? I'm going to say no. For you, it's just going to go ahead and save. And when you're done, you're going to have a run.bat right here. We'll go up one folder. And there's a few other things now we need to reference from that forum posting. On step nine, we need to make a few symbolic links. So we're going to copy this first line. And we're going to now take this into our server. We're going to run a admin level command line interface. So we're going to hit start. We're going to type CMD. We're going to click run as admin. And then we're going to navigate to our folder. So for me, I'm going to go to D drive. We're going to change to our FS underscore server folder. And we're just going to do a directory listing, just a directory listing out of what we have there already. From here, we're going to right click and paste that command line in. If you have not changed your default install path, the only thing you need to do is you need to change this 19 to 22. If you have, of course, changed your default install path, then you're going to want to go in here and type in the correct path to the Farming Simulator 22 install location for Epic Games. And once you do that, you're going to hit enter. Then go back to the forum posting, copy that second line, bring it back over here and paste it into this command line. Once again, make sure you change Farming Simulator 19 to read Farming Simulator 22 and hit enter again. Once you do that, you have made these two symbolic links that's basically referencing the PDLC folder that is in this folder and basically saying, no, 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 it's actually over here. And the same with respect to the web data. No, 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 it's actually over here. Once you've done that, we can hit exit to close out the command line. And you should now see the PDLC folder and web data folders show up here just like this. Right now, your farm sim folder should look like this minus the cert.pim and the pk.pim files. Those are gonna auto-generate once we launch the dedicated server for the very first time. The next thing we wanna do is you probably wanna have the dedicated server launch when you restart the computer and log in. So we're going to right-click on this and we are going to drag it to the desktop and we're gonna say, create shortcut. From here, we're going to want to put this shortcut into our startup folder. So our startup folder for Windows 10 and 11 should be under C colon program data, Microsoft Windows, start menu, programs, startup. I'm gonna go ahead and put that up on the screen and pause this video and then go ahead and navigate to that on that PC. And once you're there, then drag this shortcut into the startup folder. You will have to be admin in order to do that. We're gonna hit continue. We might have to answer yes to a UAC prompt. 
and then we'll have this here in our starter folder. So anytime we log into Windows after a restart, the dedicated server will auto launch, which is exactly what we want to have happen. Now that we've done that, something else you may want to do is you may want to configure this system to auto log in to Windows on restart. Otherwise, if you lose power and your PC gets turned off for some reason, or during, during the monthly Windows updates process when you restart the computer, you're going to have to remember to log back into Windows in order to have your dedicated server relaunch. I'm going to have a form posting down in the description that is going to reference various ways of setting up auto login on your Windows 10 or 11 system. I'm not going to show it to you here because there's like three or four different ways. And depending on the type of Windows you have and the type of account you're using to log into Windows with, well, various methods may or may not necessarily be the easiest to work with. From that point, we're ready to start and launch our dedicated server. So without logging out and logging back in and letting the server launch itself, we're going to simply double click on dedicated server right here. It's going to open up a command window and it's going to perform a few actions. Now you may be prompted at this point in time, do you want to allow Giants dedicated server basically to have access to your firewall? You want to answer yes. And at this point, at any point in time, if you get prompted, do you want to allow Farming Simulator 22 or the dedicated server software to have access to the internet? You want to definitely answer yes, because by answering no, you've effectively blocked access to the internet for this application, and you'll never be able to connect to it. So you want to make sure you answer yes. Now that it's running, we have a couple of URLs here. And we can basically browse to this URL from any PC, and we're going to pull up our web interface. Here we are with our web interface. We're just going to log in with our admin admin. But you would, of course, use whatever you set up as a username and password when we were configuring that dedicated server XML file. Also, remember I mentioned something about removing a section of code in that XML file just to make the, the website a little bit cleaner. Well, part of what you're removing would be this My Logo block. And then there's also going to be a My Logo block down here. So you can leave them in. You can put your own logo in, or you could just remove the code, and those spacers would go away. So we're going to log in. And from here, we can now configure a server. We can give the server a name. This is how you're going to find the server when you connect to it with your client. We can give the server a password. This is not the same password as the web login. This is going to be the admin password when you actually connect to the server. I've just for simplicity made it admin. We're going to give this the game password. This is going to be the password you use to actually log into the server session from the server browser, okay? We can pick which save slot we want. We have 20 save slots. We're gonna pick which map. We're gonna pick the career mode. How many players do you wanna have max players? We can have as little as two players or as many as 16. This is a big advantage to running your own dedicated server. It doesn't cost you more money to run and allow 16 players to connect or just two or four. Remember when we looked at G portal, it costs more to basically have more players on simultaneously. It's fine. They're a company. They need to be able to earn money some way. So another way of saving money is basically running your own server and you can have up to 16 players connect at any one point in time. Save interval. I picked 30 and then we can pause the game. If it's empty, or we can say no and the time just continues to run. Cross play if it's allowed or not, which will basically allow PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox X, or Xbox Series S to connect to your instance. 
then we'll leave that checked. Then we have our active mods. Now I'm not gonna dive into a whole lot about how to use the web interface. I've got a whole dedicated video that I will also link down below on basically how to set this up. That video more or less relates to if you are renting a server, but in essence, it's pretty much the same regardless. What we're keen on is we wanna go down here. Once we have set all of these configurations, we're gonna hit save and we're gonna hit start. Back on our server, you're gonna see, boom, we've got a new command line that has popped up. Now the game is launching in server mode and it is basically loading up the map, loading up the save game that we had pre-configured in the web interface. We're gonna let this run for a few moments, then we'll launch and connect to this from our game. Just a quick reference back here on our web server interface, we can click on home and we can see that it is booting up right now. We have a amount of RAM, we have the hardest space. Uh, this is actually installed on a disk that has two terabytes of storage. So I've got 1.4 terabytes of storage available. That's right, I have the ability of installing up to 1.4 terabytes of mods. I heaven save you if you do this on a server, but okay, it is available because you literally have as much disk space as you have available to yourself on that server to add mods. So another advantage to running your own server is gonna be near limitless disk space. Enough time has now passed, so let's go ahead and launch the game and connect into our new server. From the main menu, we're gonna pick multiplayer, join game. And from here, we're going to find our server. Typically, it's gonna come up with this giant list. Right now, there are 13,600 servers listed of 57,951 games. Not necessarily the easiest way of finding your server. So what I like to do is I like to name my servers. I like to prefix them with something fairly easy. For example, FK. And now I can sort on FK. And now I have a much smaller listing, eight to pick from. Here we have our Epic Dedicated. Remember, that's what I had named it. You're going to look for basically whatever you had named it. And we have the map. We have a lock, basically showing that it is password protected. And we have a house, basically saying that this is a private dedicated server, whereas the globe is basically saying that this is a rented server. So we have zero of 16 players connected, and this is an English server. So we're going to hit connect. We're going to type in the password that we had for the game password. In our instance, we had epic as the game password. So we're going to type that in here, and we're going to hit start. And now we are literally connecting to our dedicated server that, for me, is literally running right behind me. But for you, it could be anywhere. It could be in the next room. It could be at your neighbor's house. It could be at your mother's house. It could be at your sister's house. As long as it has an internet connection, it could literally exist anywhere. But the key is it's running on your hardware that you already had available using a free copy from Epic. Now, the only thing that we can't do is, well, we don't have access to the DLCs, which may or may not be a problem. Right? If you don't use DLCs, then it's not a problem at all. If you would like to make use of the DLCs, well, then you're going to have to basically buy some DLCs, add them to the server, and then you'll be able to activate those DLCs from the web interface and make use of that resource. So you don't have to buy the DLCs from Epic Games. You can buy the DLCs from either Epic or the Giants eShop. And if you buy it from the Giants eShop, then you'll need to download the game, download the DLC, and basically install it on the server, which will then activate your license 
and once you have activated your license then you'll be able to activate that DLC via the web interface and then log in and use that DLC in your session so guys that is basically it that is everything you need to know and do in order to basically get to the exact point that I am at right now which is to have a instance of Farming Simulator 22 free from Epic that is set up to run as a dedicated server that I can connect to at any point in time from anywhere in the world. I can have up to 16 players on the server at any one point in time as well. And the only real limitation at this point is I can't activate any of the DLCs because I don't have those licensed. But that's also very, very easily remedied if that is something that you want to do. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Did you think that about running a dedicated server with the Epic Copy? If you don't have a PC right now, if you're a console player and you're maybe thinking about getting a PC, by all means, go redeem that free copy over at Epic. Even if you don't run a server, you'll have a free copy of Farm Sim that you can use when you do, or if you do, pick up a PC. If you're already a PC player, it doesn't hurt. Go ahead, go Epic. I call myself a free game connoisseur and collector. I pretty much pick up every free game that Epic offers every week, regardless if I think I'm gonna play it or not, because you know what? It's free, why not? As a result, I have hundreds, hundreds of free games in my Epic library that I may never get around to playing, but you know what? It doesn't matter. They're free. So once again, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Feel free to share this video out with anyone that you may think may want to also look into picking up the free copy of Epic Games and using it in a purpose like this. And until next time, happy farming.